Hello everybody and welcome to 3DS Basics tutorial on how to create a gaming character. 3DS is free for students, but if you're not a student, it is affordable and you can buy it online. 3DS is an animation um, program. They use it for animation uh, such as like Disney, and it's also used for games and many other things that you can uh, create 3D objects with. So to begin with, we are going to look on the sections of each side here. So let's start with the very center. You got the top view, the front, the left, and the real-time perspective view. You can select each one and it will give you like where you're looking. By selecting this one and then clicking Alt-W, you will make it the main point and you will be able to see it just by itself. You can click Alt-W to go back and that way you will see the four of them. You can also manage to switch around by clicking L for left, T for top, or B for bottom. And if you click B, P, you go to the perspective. I will hold Alt and the mid mouse in order to move. So that's how you can do it. Or if you hold the mid mouse, you can move like that. To begin with, we are going to look at the top bar. These over here is the undo, redo, select and stuff that you don't want to use except for these two over here. And the other ones I want to use is the select. And these are very important. The move, the rotate and the scale uniformly. You can also rotate by X, Y or horizontal Z axis. Um, so the move, the rotate are W E R. So they are, these are very handy to learn. W E R. You will use also the snap toggle and the angle snap toggle. These are very important for future um, uses. You will also use the view tool. I will explain this between local and view. I'll explain all of this in the future. On the left, you will see. Let's me let me just create an object. You will see that we have one object and I'll, you can freeze it so that you can like don't mess with it and um, you can uh, hide it and that's all the hierarchy all the list everything is going to be here and you can just select them. On the right, you will see the create tab, the modify, the hierarchy, the motion, the display and the utilities. We are going to be usually just mostly using the create and the modify. The create tab has box, cone, and all these shapes that you can start off with. For a character, you might want to start with just a cube. The modifier has a list of all the modifiers you need to add in order to make it come to life. At the very bottom, you see the animation. We should start by learning how to do that, and it's because it's the easiest one. So, in order to go into animation mode, click on auto key. Now you can see there's a red, and it just symbolizes like a real webcam. So, if you scroll, these are the frames. So let's go, we go to 50, and then we move it. That will set two keys the beginning and the end and if we scroll back you will see it moving throughout the way backwards or forward to turn it off let's just delete the key because we're not going to actually use it let's delete this one as well and let's turn off animation mode the next thing you need to know is that if we go to create and we create a plane simply do this and let go you will see that the plane has both sides like you can see both sides however this is a lie this is not the truth 3ds shows at both sides but in reality you there is no backside if you want to see how it truly looks like you will have to go to object properties and then click on backface call you will see that only one side appears and that side only 
is the one side that we can see in the game engine. So let's turn it back on and this is how it looks like in the illusionary world. Next we are going to see how the vertex works. These are all the basics you need to know before you start modeling. It's very important. If we go to top and we look at this plane you will see that there are four sides, just four, four sides. One, two, three, four. You do not want to have five sides for game engines. And any game engine will not handle five sides of anything. So, for example, any object in this game can have up to four sides. But, in reality, there is another lie. If we go to Object Properties and turn off Edges Only, you will notice that there is a lot of lines. So let's just let me turn off the amount of line segments. And you will see that we have only four sides and they are split into triangles. So technically they are two triangles. One, two, three, one, two, three. So you got three verdicts on each one. And that is just the illusion of how the program works. For this example, we're not going to need to look at it, so we'll just ignore it. But you want to turn back face call on. And let's just remove it, because we don't need that. Now let's go to P, Perspective. And I noticed that I have made this upside down. That doesn't matter. That's fine. So, now we are back to the fresh start. In order to start modeling, each of the characters you're going to start with, depending how it is, mostly and usually it's going to be a box. Sometimes it might be a cone or a sphere. But, another example, if we go to top view, create a cone, you will notice that these have a lot of sides, way too many and the game will not accept this. You cannot have these many. So, select P, get back, and we are set. So, let's create a box, and the first thing you want to do is to center it. To do that, click W, which is the same as selecting the select and move, and then you want to center it 0, 0, zero. That way it is perfectly centered. I'll explain why we have centered it. It is very important. Next we are going to apply a modifier. This is the ribbon here. This is where you control all the sub-object mode. The sub-object mode which symbolizes that you can edit the object itself in specific parts of it. Remember that you cannot and must not scale without having a modifier on. If you scale this, you will you will just screw up the whole project. Do not scale unless you're in sub-object mode. I'll explain when exactly you can uh, scale this. So let's apply in modifier. We're gonna go to modifier list, make sure in the second tab, and then click on E, D, and it'll bring you to edit poly right here. Click on edit poly, and now you see the vertex, the edges, the borders, the polygon and the element. We are not going to use the element or the borders like barely, rarely, like it's, it's you're never gonna see it basically. So we're gonna use the polygons, vertex, and the edges. So now if you go to um, selecting the vertex, you are now in sub-object mode. Once this turns yellow, you are in sub-object mode. And now you are allowed to use the scaling method. So next we're going to learn what each of these do. We don't want to start character modeling the character before we know what these are. So, go to F, front view, and now I'm going to show you the difference between selecting one vertices and selecting both sides, this one and this one. So let's say you want to select only this one, just click on it and it's selected. But if you want to select both at the same time, all you have to do is just drag and marquee selected. And now you can see that they're both selected. This is very handy 
for future purposes. Next, we are going to learn the extrude. The extrude is very commonly used. I personally use it a lot. So let's go to polygon mode. You can select whichever polygon you want. And if you click on extrude, you can hold and go up with the mouse and it will extrude it. So this way it can even go in. Now let's control Z and to turn off let's right click. So now it's turned off. If you want to remove make sure that you select it the polygon and click delete. Don't click backspace. It doesn't help. So now we can see the inside. Remember that the inside does not exist. If we turn off backface coal, it's empty. There is nothing to see from the inside. And this is very handy, and you'll see why in a little bit. Next, we are going to look at why and how we can uh, modify this further on. So let's say that we create a swift loop, which is a swift loop is once you click on it, it's right here. So click on it, and it'll create more polygons. Remember that each of them are four sides only or less. There's three or four sides, nothing less. Because that's what makes up a polygon. It's three dots coming together to make a polygon. So let's make a line segment here and a line segment here. And next, we're going to look at... And let's just create another one, you know. Sometimes they are very close. We can make them very close. There is one more hint that you should know about. It is very, very important. Keep the polygon count really low. An engine does not like high poly objects. Like, for example, we have around one, two, three, four. On just on these four, we have four right here and one two three four so that's eight just on this side this can make a difficulty if we create more and more and more the engine will have to count more using mathematics and we don't want that so let's say that we have two polygons that we don't need like they are just there but there's too many vertices that we don't need so to do that to fix this we're gonna go to vertice select both and then to make them one and save one polygon for us so that the engine doesn't have to count it you simply click on collapse that way it is collapsed and you can do it all the way so select these as well and just click collapse and now you'll see that there is less polygons which just makes it easier for the engine now let's go back and let's learn about chamfering. Chamfering is very very important to make it round. So if we go to edges and we select this edge, if you double click it'll select the whole edge. So let's double click that, double click that, and let's go to chamfer. Chamfer is just beneath extrude. Click on chamfer and then hold and go up or down and you'll see that it's very bearing rounded. Like once if you click it again it'll even go rounder than that. So now you can see that you have a very circleish edge with just four-sided polygons, and which is amazing. Next, we are going to learn on how to cut. Swift loop and cutting are very similar. Swift loop is uniform and it's it, it's it's there's not many freedom in it. Like it's not much. But if you go to cut, you will be able to cut wherever you want make sure that you don't cut between lines and just leave it there for example if I just cut one here through here and leave it like right click you will see that we end up with five sides one two three four five and you can tell by how many vertices there are you don't want a polygon with five vertices or more that's just bad so, to fix that, you would s select cut, go to the same vertice, make sure you're selecting it, select and go to another vertice. That way, you will have four sides by three sides, which is amazing. So, 
Now that you learned how to cut, swift loop, extrude, and chamfer, let's move on to connect. Connect can be very useful for cutting in half perfectly. Let's go to edges, select this edge and this edge, and click in on connect. You can see that it's perfectly cut in half. It's very, very handy for people who don't want to use Swift Loop as often. You can also, I'll just control Z to undo, you can also shift and connect and you will get more options. So you can make more segments and more horizontal ones even. We don't need them for now, but that's a way to do it and it's very handy. Alright, next we are going to look on how to freeze the object. So in order to freeze it, you would have to quit sub-object mode, maybe go to create, I just prefer it to select the whole thing, and simply click on frozen. Now sometimes frozen might be annoying, and it just turns gray, but it's blocking the ones behind it, you can't see it, so you have to turn around all the time. So to fix that, you would go to object properties, and show frozen in gray, turn that off, and now you, it will be just as it is. It, it's, it's not going to be gray, it's just going to seem like how it is in real scenes. It is useful sometimes, but sometimes it's not. Next, you're going to see how we can make it invisible. So, if you go to Object Properties and look at Visibility, this one, it seems like a 1%, but it's not. This is actually 100%. Max, 3ds Max uses the system of one, 0 to 1, as 0 to 100. So if we go and make it 3, this is 30%. So you will be able to see 30% of the opacity. You can also have, let's set it to 1. If you right click on the top or bottom, you would go to, um, to 1 or 0 inst instantaneously. So let's click, uh, make it uh, 100 again. And then if you Alt and X, it'll go and be transparent immediately. It's not frozen, but it's transparent. So Alt X, Alt X. Next, we're going to start seeing how the uh, the animation works, or not the animation, the modeling itself. So let's remove that. Click on P. And one more thing that should come in handy. And it's to know that if you click J, you will see the small brackets, which can come by on by default. So make sure that you turn on. It's, they're just annoying, so just get rid of them, and it'll be much easier for you. You should learn that you go go and turn off the edges by clicking F4 and clicking F, um, what was it? F3 in order to see it transparently, like. It, like all of it except the outlines and to go to um, let's see oops that's not it and there is the wireframe which we can't see now because we haven't edited enough uh, to apply the modifier so let's go and start it from the beginning now we are back and ready to start modeling a whole character so we're going to start with a body. We're not going to start with head or hands, just a body. So create a cube and then apply the edit poly. There is one shortcut. You can go to the ribbon. Don't select it. Just, just go on here. Click polygon and click apply edit poly mode. And now you have it ready. So, go to F, and then we are going to, oh, remember to center it. We forgot to center it. So, 0, 0, 0. And now, go to Edit Poly. Make sure it's selected, and make sure you're in sub-object mode. And then, we're going to select, go to Edges, and select, Marquee Select, those edges. Make sure they're all selected, which they should be since we Marquee Selected. And then, click on, remember it? connect. And now it's split in half. Then go to polygon and 
erase it. Just get rid of it. You'll see why we just removed one half. And now you're guessing that I'm going to, of course, turn off or turn on backface call to see it how it truly looks like. Let's go back to logic mode and then we're going to look at how exactly we're supposed to start shaping this. Before we do anything, we want to make sure, just for the sake of time, to apply a symmetry modifier. And to do that, go to modifier list, click on S, Y, and you'll end up at symmetry. Click on symmetry, and it's gone. Wow. That's, that's what we want, right? No, we don't. We just mirrored this side to this side. Well, we want this side to mirror this side. So let's go and click on flip. Make sure it's X. Make sure it's X axis here that you're um, a mirroring. Then go back to edit poly. And now here comes the magic. If we marquee select this and move it, it will mirror the next side. And if you have a symmetric character, this is perfect. So now that you have a symmetry, you cannot select this. You can only do it with this side and it'll just mirror it. Make sure to never ever let this cross the x-axis. If you do, it's just gonna end up there, you can't see it, and it's not good because you can't just see it. If you turn off symmetry, that's what it looks like. That's, that's horrible. So to fix that, just select it and click zero. So next, I'm gonna turn off back symmetry. And now we are going to apply a few swift loops. So let's go to swift loop. Let's put one right here, right here, right here, and right click to end it. And now there is another shortcut to chamfer something. You click both and you hold control and backspace. And now the edges are cut perfect and clean. It is quite not that circleish, I don't think that it is, but to do that we're going to chamfer. So select both. Make sure you select this one as well. And now just go ahead, go to chamfer, and then chamfer it. That looks good. And now if you can tell we have just created five side poly, which is bad. So to fix that, we are going to go and create an edge. It's not using cut, but just simply by creating an edge. Make sure you're in edge mode, go to create, select this vertices and connect it to this one. And now we have solved the problem of the how many sides there is. And let's do that to the same side if it's having the same problem. But no, it seems to be good here. Okay, very good. Well, it does. It's right here, actually. So let's just do it this way. And now we do it this side. So now all of them are four sides. There is a way to count on how to do this. So I will show it to you in the future. It is very simple. So let's create some edges here just to make sure we're not five sides. Okay, that seems good enough. I hope you're up to speed now. It is a lot to go through, but it is all doable. And keep in mind that all we do here is apply there. So now you can see that there are many vertices that we just don't need. So for example, this one and this one. I mean, seriously, like, we do not need those. Like, what's this gonna do for us? So let's collapse it, as we said before. By going to collapse, just select both, collapse. And now it's much cleaner. This one and this one, collapse. Well, sometimes you don't wanna do it, but I'm just saying give an example on when you use it, make sure it's clean. So, for example, we do need these ones, just to make it circlish. Let's make sure that this one as well here is collapsed. So, just collapse it, and there you go. So, next, we are going to start applying 
even more swift loops. Now we can actually collapse these as well. There you go, perfect. And collapse. Whoops, I selected all of them. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Perfect. Alright, so good, good. Now we are going to add more swift loops in order to start shaping to look like an object or a body. So let's apply a few here. And it's going to be very basic. It would help if we have a photo in the background, but that's advanced. It's too early to go on and do this, and it takes a lot of time to apply it there. So, if we go, <coughs> excuse me, let's go ahead and start shaping it. So, by selecting vertices, you can start going in and just simply use your imagination and just try to make it look like a body as much as possible. This is where the imagination and creativity kicks in. Like you can't just learn how to do it. You can, but it's gonna take you a while. But you just need to know like how it looks like basically. And I'm not gonna be perfect because you know nobody is, but I'm just just gonna try and make a chest here. But so as you can see it's like it looks like a body a little bit. So let's go to L to left and now let's see we wanna push it in just like that push this one in as well and make sure that you have an edge flow I should have covered this before an edge flow is very very important and what it is is that make sure that your edges have the flow of a straight line like you just need to have an edge flow it's necessary for future textures and everything so let's say that this imagine if this is like going like that just going up that's that's not really an edge flow it just like you can't go like that that's just it doesn't flow with the edges so let's go to L again and start using this So just marquee select and it'll copy the other side. It's very simple. Keep in mind that the, a back is never straight. We tend to think that it's straight, but it's actually not true at all. So as you can see, this is starting to look like a body. We want to make it organic, so make sure that it's um There are no straight lines in nature, rarely any, but just if you notice that organic bodies tend to have a non straight line. It's it's not straight at all. We could probably add another swift loop. Make sure that you count keep the uh, poly count really uh, low. Probably for a whole body you wanna have it less than three thousand. It's just much better. And um Let's select these vertices. I keep on control once I select multiple ones. Keep holding control in order to select others. And if you want to deselect it, hold Alt and you'll see the minus sign just beneath the mouse and you can just deselect it. It's very simple. And you can just move it. So as you can see, now we started to look like a little bit of a body. There's still a lot of uh, work in progress needs to be done here. But if we apply another swift loop right here, that's good. Now we can pop up the chest up and make it like look like a man. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna select uh, this one right here. And now it still looks a little bit. I, I don't like how it's looking right here. This is just not good. So we're gonna have to like maybe push it in a little bit on the XY axis so just do that and now it looks a little bit circlish which is better and then as you can see we're gonna have to go and fix this later like this is just not acceptable there make sure you have the edge flow as always so yes the edge flow is not good here at all so 
let's just push it like that and you know I'm gonna just skip forward here so or even heck skip it the whole thing let's just move on to the to the legs or head yeah we we'll probably should go to the head by now for but yeah once you start getting used to it you will eventually be able to create a body just using this by knowing that you, you need a uh, few polygons you know how to do the swift loop you know how to uh, that, uh, you cannot scale it if it's not in sub object you're already knowing how to do all that it's just the very basics of just knowing how to be creative and finish the body by yourself I will show you at the end another way but for now we should probably end it here for part one and you can now see that we have ended up from this to this simply by creating um, edit poly it is very very useful so that's very good so thank you guys for watching subscribe for more future tutorials and stay tuned for part two because it's gonna be an awesome series so I will see you guys next time bye bye